Hello and welcome to another guitar show. Here's what to expect from today's episode. All right. Okay. You ready for one note? You ready? I know which note you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the song? Five different ways to play an easy beginner riff. Can you see why some people struggle to learn guitar? <laughs> Welcome to another guitar show. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be checking out, at least initially, how to play a guitar solo without thinking. I'm going to do many other things in this episode, but this is going to be kind of the crux of it. Um, when I'm teaching this, typically, it tends to be something that I encourage more for electric guitar players, um, particularly in the, the rock and blues genres. And the first point of call for those people would be minor pentatonic. Mm -hmm. um, after though, and this is where I'd, I'd like to bring you in, Thomas. Um, after initially teaching, you know, the positions and where to put your fingers and getting the competency of playing it, I want to develop an instinct for melody from the people that I teach mm -hmm. alongside learning a lick and learning how to use that side of things. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that kind of thing? So that kind of thing, I think, stems from having a good library to kind of fall back on. We've all played. Mm -hmm. So if you play that enough, anytime you hear that, you go, ah, I know what that is. And I think through those channels, you just start to develop those senses of, I know where this melody should go, where it can go, and sure. what those notes will lead me to. So what you played there was a, a lick, uh -huh. which I would define a lick as um, something, a short phrase, something that isn't unique but has a sound to it which is somewhat mm. unique as opposed to a riff which i would define as something that is could be built up of different licks but a riff normally repeats and is recognizable as that as a song a riff is copyrightable mm -hmm. but a lick isn't we can steal licks and that's what we try and encourage i want to start off with this one just pegging it back a little mm -hmm. bit more and just back to the bare bones of it, which mm -hmm. is if you play something that you just played similar yeah. to that, you're actually playing, um, so if you're in the key of A, and you're over a blues or a rock song in the key of A, and you're sticking to minor pentatonic over the top, most of the time you're only actually playing fret 5 and fret 7 yeah. on, you know, string 3, 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. That is where I would be starting with people. Just do that over a backing right. track, over a song that you know is in the key of A, sure. and get used to doing that first if you've never done it. Right. That for my students I see as taking the stabilizers off. Yeah. <laughs> can, you keep, can you keep it balanced when you, ha you haven't got the notes in the tab in front of you uh -huh. of, of what to play? Have you ever taught something like that before? Yeah, and I do the same kind of thing. What I do is I'll take the top, yeah, sure. One, two, and three. The only reason I don't, I haven't historically gone for the top notes is because they're three frets apart. Yeah. And that is enough of a stretch for most people. Yeah. But a great thing to do, therefore, is just move it up a position and mm -hmm. see these four notes yeah. as exactly the same as those four mm -hmm. notes. So once a student is comfortable doing this and perhaps doing the sort of standard yeah. blues rock phrasing there, it's all the same phrasing. <laughs> that's our root, that's our root, exactly. and that's where I'd be pulling up that way. So that's a sort of beginner way into that, and that might seem very advanced, but the physical skills required are pretty easy. Yeah. You, just, you just need the stabilizers on a little bit at the yeah. start, because we're in the key of A, you have to know about keys and things like that, but that's still got the stabilizers on. Mm -hmm. How can we take the stabilizers off and look at it more, like you say, possibly from more of a, 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 thinking about lead lines as a language, yeah. thinking about licks as words and phrases. So the next thing we do is open up the position. So rather than maybe just a small group of strings, we've got the whole thing. So we've got a wide range with two octaves in here. We can start adding in some maybe faster variations. What we already know, Andy played this, something like that. Why not? Mm -hmm. Basically the same thing, just double the speed, but suddenly it's something new. And you're saying that is faster, but actually what you're adding is some form of phrasing, which is a flick off right. or a hammer on and flick off pattern. Uh -huh. 
which, you know, sounds very <laughs> amazing. Uh, you know, if, if you've never done it before to a beginner, that's, yeah. that's good. Most people want to be able to do that, but in, it's, it's a technique, it's a, a phrasing technique, hammer-ons and flick-offs. Really, mm -hmm. I would think about it as a phrasing technique. Yes. And just adding, you know, one or two notes with phrasing is, is something else entirely. So sure. adding those phrasing concepts. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see people add that enough when they have the ability, yeah. but they don't add it I in think the, that's in a great, a great thing. And I think what I aim to do is to try and replicate a voice, mm -hmm. like a human voice at some stage of it. Obviously we all like, <laughs> and there's not too many voices who are gonna do that. But that, what you did. Making it sound lyrical. Exactly. And do you know when we, if you watched the previous episode of this, um, we were working out riffs blindfolded, which we'll be doing again and working out lead lines mm -hmm. blindfolded. Um, the one that I couldn't get of yours was because I couldn't imagine it in my mind first. I was trying to sing it in my mind and then find what I was singing. And I couldn't get it in the mind, therefore there's no mm -hmm. way the fingers were going to find it. So you're kind of getting on to the idea of being able to sing these scales so mm. Mm. just a major scale mm -hmm. those of you might know it as do re mi fa sol la di do mm -hmm. and just being able to kind of put that sound la da, da, the, the exactly. interval training That's right. and it is it is that thinking about these these scales or, or licks in an interval way mm -hmm. breeds that instinct for melody yeah which in my experience has always, well, for me at least, is always my get out of jail free card. Yeah. I haven't got that lick that's just perfect or yeah. the song or the jam's gone to a chord that I'm like, I'm not sure what that chord is. <laughs> Instinct for melody will get you out of, of, mm -hmm. that, um, of that, that spot. Yeah, but cool. also give you something that's really sort of unique and, and beautiful. Yeah. You know, per, per all my favorite guitar solos ain't the ones that go twiddly widdly. Exactly. They're always the one where, oh, that move, that move. And a way to cultivate that is not to just think of these scales as positions, mm -hmm. but also think about them perhaps on one string. I, I, use, I use this so often just to force myself to focus on melody mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than just guitar licks. Yeah. And this, this should be done alongside, if, if not um, after licks, because I think the licks concept is so important. But a great thing to do is say, say if you're, you know, this is your home. So if that is your home when you're improvising and you just can't quite get up to like the next position, top of position two, the BB King box or anything, um, go, on one, go on one string. Just go on one string and especially with the major scale. The major scale can be so, you know, thinking of major scale position one and trying to get people to really make music and improvise yeah, with exactly. that. There's always a block. And a great way out of that is just to think, do re mi fa sol. Suddenly you got an instinct for melody. It, yeah, when you change the perspective of it and mm. suddenly you're not playing horizontally, or you've got so much, so much information. When you go to vertically, really, you can only do so much like this. And I think that it's restriction true. really kind of... When you played that just then, you know what I thought? I thought John Mayer. I've heard John Mayer yeah. do that sort of thing so much. And you're focusing on vibrato uh -huh. and the tonal quality of exactly. the note, which so is all good stuff, all the right back stuff. That's that lyrical idea of yeah. replicating a voice. 100%. That is a yeah, uh, that somewhere. is waiting on the world to change a little yeah, bit there. You know, that, it, su superb stuff. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different layers that we've discussed there, and I really, I really want to with this series. I want to lead the breadcrumbs so that we can keep this open to as many people mm -hmm. as possible. But therefore, some of that's going to be lost, or you're going to have more questions on each of those things. But the main thing that I'd like to communicate here is just to, if you're not improvising yet in any way over a lead backing track or anything, start. No matter what level you're at, and the most basic place to start would be over a 12 bar blues in A, something yep. blues rocky, and walking up and down the minor pentatonic scale. And starting there, and just getting comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. And then all these other things that you learn about, you know, ooh, you can add the Dorian mode yeah. over the four chord, or, you know, going chord specific licks or building licks um, like you would build a sentence of smaller words and phrases. Um, all of these things you add mm -hmm. as you're going forward. 
but especially with improvising i think i think that's the one area of guitar which is almost the least methodical and sequential yeah everybody because because it depends on the musical situation and you, everyone will kind of have a slightly different approach to it based 100%. on your upcoming with the guitar yeah. it is i think this is one area where we can this is truly finding your voice on the instrument yeah, it, re it really is and um, therefore there are a lot of parts of this that, are, that i've stayed away from because i'm very aware it's not my voice mm -hmm. um almost to a fault i would say as well which we, we should all focus at times on our weaknesses and make sure that we can do a variety of genres and different players yeah, just get that wider range and come at it from different angles mm -hmm. um but i was always very aware of what i wanted to do on the instrument and and in fact often i think the biggest thing we should say here is often it's easier to improvise a solo than learn a new solo yeah. when i was in a rock yeah, covers so. band and we were learning five songs a week uh -huh. as a band or you know ending up with a 30 to 60 song set if not more you know i wasn't prioritizing nailing the solo correctly no. i want to get all these songs learned and just get it in a way that we can do with the band and that's an interesting point actually because within those solos to me there's always been parts that jump out as the melodic hooks yes and getting those other bits that are the licky fluffy bits doesn't really matter as long as you're in the same general tone as that then those bits great great example there. the start of johnny be good one of the main reasons i play guitar is because when i was six years old i saw martin mcfly play johnny be good and that was that i just thought that was the greatest thing in the world and then of course there's a hundred a hundred thousand different youtube tutorials of how to play johnny be good mm. like chuck berry try and find a video of chuck berry playing it the same way twice yeah or ever playing it the same way as the recording. Because <laughs> he never did again. Every Chuck Berry song basically starts, you know. And then after that, he'd normally make it up. Yeah. Let's be frank. Let's be totally honest and say he'd normally make it up and he would not normally, Chuck Berry would not normally play it exactly as the recording. No. As a learner guitar player, the sooner you learn that, the better. And of course, when we're learning a song at, at, at a higher level and trying to, trying to get better and try and improve, we want to try and nail the inflections. Because yeah. there's a reason we love it. There's yeah, a reason exactly. we love that recording gets immortalized. But you've got to learn that there's the building blocks of a riff like that. And then there are the notes that you, you would try to learn, but you can also find your own voice, especially yeah. if you want to learn, like, let's jam five Chuck Berry songs. Yeah. We don't need to just stick to the one <laughs> and then play it over and over again until we get it right. Especially, you know, if you're looking at being a cover band or something. Yeah, exactly. So in this part of the show, we're going to be playing famous riffs to each other and trying to guess them. But we're going to start with just one note. We want you to play along at home. We want you to comment what you think this uh, each riff or song is. And I'm going to be playing the riff first. I'm just going to play you one chord. Oh, we'll start with one chord. OK, here we go. Could be any number of things. Could be many. An open A. For, uh, yes, but it, it, we would class that as an A power chord. Yes, yeah, we're okay. not really thinking play that. Yeah. So we're just hearing that. Do you want two? Because otherwise, two. it's yeah. there are a lot of songs. There's a there. lot of songs. Okay, give me two. Okay. Is this an ACDC song? It is. <laughs> is it Highway to Hell? It is. Good man. <laughs> I'm glad. I've Finally, one he knows. I've recovered. <laughs> <laughs> I've saved face a little bit. That's all good. Can you play the rest of the riff? Uh huh. Pause there. I love this one because it's so simple, but nobody plays it the same no way. One ever does it, do they? I've seen. I, I think for a three chord riff. Yeah. How many different ways could you play that one? It's it's the the D slash F sharp to the G, and I think Angus plays it kind of like this. But you played it uh, with the thumb over the top, yeah. which I would typically. So that's kind of two ways. A third way is with the first three fingers. Which is um, a lot of people kind of well, when I'm teaching this to beginners, I I do say think of it as a D chord and kind of like yeah. that, just so they're familiar with the shapes. I've even seen people doing, I think Angus occasionally. Yeah, I think that's what I call it. Five different ways to play 
an easy beginner riff. Dreams. Can you see why some people struggle to learn guitar? <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things, man, but it's so true. There's always different ways yeah. to play the same Everyone thing. Do you know any riffs like that that you could do name this riff in one? Different ways to play the same one? No. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see, is there something no. to think of? Okay, I'm gonna need to. Nothing. Actually, I think I'm playing an upper semitone. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do it again. Okay, we'll put it down. Put it down. <laughs> do it from there if you want. We'll put it down so it'll make sense. All right. Okay. You get it for one note? You ready? I know which note you're going to play. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick this one? Yes. So well, I've got that one. Play two notes. Play the, the second. Power, everybody. Play the second. Good. That's Red Dwarf theme for anyone that. Uh, <laughs> no, that so was we. A that was it, right? The next one. Go on. I don't know. I don't know the song. Go on. Keep, keep going. Give me five minutes. I might get it. I feel good. Hey. Perf yeah. What key would that be? Yeah, C sharp. Beautiful. The first one I didn't butcher. <laughs> no one would have cared if you'd have done that indeed. <laughs> I think the internet would have spared you there. <laughs> There's someone somewhere, there always is. <laughs> There'll be someone some on Reddit popping up. Um, okay. Hmm. That's the one. Give me a number two. I'll give you another an extra one now. Hmm. I'm thinking of Thinking of some bluesy, some bluesy. 100%. I'll have to rush you. Whoa. Whoa. What would you go for next after that? You have, that? That's the third note, but don't bend it for the for the riff on the Oh, you've thrown me through the looper there. No, I'm sorry. Give me number four. So now you know the ballpark, yeah. but which song is it, is the tricky one. See, all I can think of is Johnny Be Good now. But it's not Johnny no, Be Good, not. but it is probably the third biggest hit. But it, that's how it starts. Is it Chuck Berry? It is Chuck Berry. Whoa. Which one is it? <laughs> exactly, but which song is it? Oh, you're testing me now. There, there is a move which you haven't played yet, which is a bit more specific to this one song. Give me another one. The, I've not done the specific move yet, and which will not, give it away. And it's not. It's not Johnny Be Good. The Beals covered it on an early album. Play along at home, write in the comments. Oh. You know that one. Yeah, the name of it is once again escaping me. <laughs> We've got Andy and his encyclopedic knowledge of the name, and I've got a brain like a sieve. I <laughs> <laughs> well, I teach, now teach songs for a living largely. You've picked the worst person to do this. No, no, it's all good. I think, you've, I think uh, mate, if you struggle with some of this, people at home will. Where does but it yes, go after that, that one. Where does it go after that? Roll over Beethoven. I'm gonna write a little letter, gonna mail it to the DJ. 
<laughs> roll over Beethoven. At some point, all the blues starts to just sound like one big jam. I think it's really important to spot that as a learner. Yeah, I think spot good. spot similar songs. I've even done a series on YouTube now called Songs That Sound Basically the Same. <laughs> all eras, all, you, can, you can always reduce yeah. things back, but Chuck Berry ones. <laughs> Learn that, you got the start to most of them, and that one has a particular... Which I think I butchered there, because I didn't do that. But that has a particular um, phrase which is, is unique to, mm -hmm. to that song, as done Johnny Be Good. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't know that particular song, they can all just sound the same as well. Therefore, learn it. You'll mm -hmm. know a lot of songs. Really great Very one. Good. What about this one? That's the first note. You're in the right area. That's what, that's what I'm gonna play, but it's not. But it's not purple haze. No, because that's not the first two notes. It's not it's Ian, isn't it? Or E flat, is it? Uh, the first notes of purple haze would be would be up there. So where? That's the only note I've given you so far. Hmm. Give me the second note. Oh, I gave you three. Oh, Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Ah. That's three. Thank God. Yeah, What's man. The, uh... What's the name of the song? I'll give you one of the words. Song. <laughs> True. <laughs> He's going to edit in crickets here. <laughs> oh. Immigrant song. But that's a, it, if, you, if you just don't know it for whatever reason, it's hard to get that because I don't think he says immigrant song as well. Yeah. That's immigrant sure. song. Do one for me, show me up. Okay. Come on, get your own back. Right. Oh, you play that with a little finger. So I'm trying to get, I don't know it, play this, play the next note, but I'm trying to gather from position where you're going to go. Nope, no idea. Third okay. note. Dun, dun, dun. Nothing coming to mind. Really? Oh, ah. I've, I've stumped him. Don't number four? Please. It'll cost you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's coming. Really? Okay. Like common lick, but I don't know the song. Another dun, 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 down, down. Don't know it. Sixth note. Dun, 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 down, down, down. You're, gonna, you're probably going to have to play the riff. I don't know. I think you stumped me. Oh, that? Oh, yeah. But... There we go. Yeah, it's true. So we have, yeah. That, so that, yeah. All right. So it's superstition? It is. It is. Stevie Wonder. I've always wanted to play that one in E, so we got the yeah. Without the low note, it loses a lot of it. I wanted to stay true. You and your keys, yeah. honestly. <laughs> It's true, we can all be stumped though, I think that's really important and yeah, there we go, we're stumping each other with these one notes, okay. which is understandable yeah, for definitely. one note, I think. So the next thing we're going to look at is tips on how to play with others, which can be a very scary concept for the first time you jump into it, but really I think it's where most of us want to end up, even recreationally or professionally, it doesn't matter, it's still the same thing. So it can be quite daunting kind of showing yourself because it's so naked sometimes when you get up and you hit that chord and you gotta think god am i in tune is the is the rhythm right is you know there's so many things so what do you think about this for for myself it was daunting having anyone else hear me play yes never mind hoping to play with a, <laughs> someone else who i know can play yes. <laughs> um i think part of this is accepting that guitar is a performance skill mm -hmm. And if you're not working on a performance element, as we say, to, to any degree, whether this is just jamming with a buddy down the street or wanting to be in a, a band someday, there's an element to performing needs, needs to come with learning an instrument. And that's a wonderful thing, even if it's just playing it for your mum or your dog. Mm -hmm. Practicing the performing bits will help everything. 
And the safest way into that is practicing to play with someone else because then it's like a problem shared is a problem half. Yes. If you have other musicians, it's, it's, always, much, it's always been much easier for me to practice for and, and play gigs with a band and I'll be ne less nervous with a band than it is a solo show with acoustic guitar where it's all on me. Uh -huh. Or, you know, perhaps lead guitar with a backing track, though I've not done that too many times. But it is, that's, <laughs> that's daunting stuff because you know the attention's on you. Um, if there's four of you on stage or there's two of you playing, you know the attention's shared, so mm -hmm. you can kid yourself that no one's looking at you yeah. at, at the very least. Um, but safe points to start is just playing with any anyone else in, in a really, really casual way. You're not wanting yeah. to you know, work towards playing Wembley Stadium or anything. You're wanting to play with friends, neighbors, family members, you know, anyone that plays piano. If someone plays harmonica and you can play a 12 bar blues for them, they will love it because suddenly they've got kind of their chance yeah, to shine. Exactly. Um, you know, if a, a wife, spouse or, or child's learning piano, try and see if you can learn something to accompany them and you will have to help each other. That's mm -hmm. what it'll always come yeah. to, especially in those situations. How, how about, so how did you first start? So it's the same as yourself, a band, but before the band, there's the practice. Yes. And even that sometimes, it, it's jumping in with people you don't know, it's always the scariest, with friends and stuff. It's true. So why not start there with friends, like you said, particularly some that you're a bit more confident with and it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. And the thing is, it never does. Just getting over that pressure that you put on yourself uh, so starting with friends really helped me before we jumped into going. Was that in school? Lives. Was that school, that was school essentially after school? Yeah. But it was in your own time. It wasn't organised through the school. No, it was. It wasn't. It was. Was it a band actually, leader? I think it came probably initially. Well, I, I'm quite lucky because my sister is a pianist as well, so we kind of mess around and judge each other. It was encouraged at home. Unfortunately, yeah, we've judge got each that, other. Yeah. Fortunately, we've got that <laughs> dynamic as brothers and sisters do at that age, but it was there from the start. Um, I had very supportive parents when I came to and sometimes they can be the harshest critics sitting in front of your dad who's been playing for so that's long. That's lovely dear, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that wasn't all. very good, was it? Yeah. <laughs> but that's but, it, no, it is true that, that friends and family members sometimes aren't the best. Be, right. it, is, it is nice to, you know, you know this, is, this is why I do run some, some jam classes and I feel it's very important. Mm -hmm. um, I started jamming with friends from school. I was invited to it. And I started off as the keyboard player because they needed a keyboard player. <laughs> and I started taking my guitar along because nobody wants to be the keyboard playing in a rock band, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, and we used to practice at the drummer's house, uh, at um, his grand's house, mm -hmm. because she had a hearing aid and she could turn the hearing aid off and then we could be as loud as we wanted. I think that's my favorite kind of critic. That's, Why that's. Can't hear you? You were great, guys. I couldn't <laughs> hear one note. It was wonderful. That's exactly what you want sometimes. Um, but it's so true, just finding any way, any way to start. Mm -hmm. And um, it's great when it's encouraged at home. If it isn't, there is always other opportunities for it when you look for them. I think group guitar classes, jam classes, open mic nights have always been amazing for me. Mm -hmm. I've met the people that have... Um, been, you know, been in bands with for a good amount of time. It's always gone well. I've met a lot of those people through open mic nights mm -hmm. and things. Singers, drummers, you name it. It's a great cultivation. Yeah, those are great. For it. Especially because they give you a lot of the time chance to play with larger groups of people. So if you're really nervous about this, jumping into a group of eight people mm. playing is a lot easier than jumping into one the or two. The attention is not on you. Yeah, exactly. But when it, when it is, say you want to jam with Dave down the street and you both play guitar and you're thinking, what should we actually do? In my opinion, you've got a couple of options and two things you should work on very much separately. One is learning some songs. Nobody, I don't think anybody gets into guitar to learn the Mixolydian mode. I think everybody <laughs> learns guitar because they love songs, they love their favorite bands, and mm -hmm. you, you should learn songs as the first priority. Some, some songs are easier to learn than others. Most of the time that's because of structure. Simple structured songs where you've got a, a repetitive chord sequence and it's, you know, not a middle eight and then a bridge and then it goes off on a tangent and very little repetition. That is, that is not, that's going to be hard to jam. Mm -hmm. be, if you knew a song and I didn't know that song, you say, oh, it's really simple, but it didn't repeat. Exactly. Uh, we couldn't jam it, basically. It would, it would be very, very difficult at the least. Whereas if it were like, here's three chords or here's a riff mm -hmm. and we're away. 
This will always be helped though if you start on this lead improvisation and finding those situations that are easier for you to play some lead or give someone uh -huh. in the group some lead to do. Um, with songs, for example, maybe one of you does sing, do songs that the person who yeah. sings can sing. Even if you like ACDC, for example, they're very hard songs for most people to sing, so maybe mm -hmm. that's not the best one to go for that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe leave Bohemian Rhapsody till... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe leave that a little bit later. <laughs> leave, leave that to... Uh, what's, I forget the guy's name, but he sounds amazing. Freddie Mercury. No, no, um, the, the, guy, uh, fra, the guy who actually recorded the sound-alike from the movie. So it's Rami oh, Malek. Right, yes. Is the actor, but the sound-alike that they use for that movie is incredible. Uh -huh. Um, yes, oh man, yeah. uh, he's, he's just, he really is Freddy incarnate. That's leave it in. Um, but those, those longer musical sections can be the hardest thing to learn. And also knowing that that balance between giving yourself an outlet. So if you have practiced, say, the Sweet Child of Mine solos or something, <laughs> yeah. you can have your moment a little bit, but you know, it's a group. Mm -hmm. You're trying to, you're trying to get, make something work. And I think all the best bands, all the best music comes from not the best musicians on paper, but from making the right thing work with the musicians that you have there. Mm -hmm. That's why supergroups rarely actually work. They, they rarely sound that great. Audio Slave are amazing, but they actually have very few songs that sort of yeah. kicked off and they didn't last long enough. Yeah. And, but on paper, what a band. But mm -hmm. it, it like didn't a, quite live up to the, exactly. each one's and original project. A bunch project. of guys from Australia rock now power chords, ACDC. Sound amazing. Uh, they're not the most technically amazing songs, most technically amazing players, but they make it sound fantastic. It's almost working with your limitations rather than against yeah, them, isn't it? Exactly. 100%. No, really cool stuff there. So that's another guitar show. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your comments in the description below of suggestions, mm -hmm. songs that you want us to, to pick apart, you know, any other features. Um, yeah, this has been really fun. I'm really enjoying it so far. I hope you guys are too. We will see you next Sunday and we're really looking forward to uh, hearing your feedback from this new show.